What if I told you that this one automation I'm about to show you could replace your entire $20,000 marketing design team? Most people think you need to hire expensive designers, copywriters, and marketing specialists to create professional assets for your business. But here's the thing, I just built a system that does all of that automatically using AI agents and no code tools, and it cost me practically nothing to set up. But get this. The most impressive part isn't even the money you'll save, because what I discovered is that this automation doesn't just create one design at a time like a human designer would. It simultaneously generates platform-specific marketing assets for Instagram, websites, ad creatives, and more, all from a single product input. We're talking about going from zero to a complete marketing campaign in under five minutes. Today, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I built this system using N8N. You'll see how the AI agent reads your product details, name, tagline, benefits, and automatically generates professional marketing assets that look like they came from a high-end design agency. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to build your own automated marketing design team that works 24-7 and never asks for a raise. Alright, let's dive in. I added the AI tools that we're going to use in the description so you can check it out. Let me show you how the workflow actually works before we start building anything. It's easier to follow once you've seen it in action. In this example, we're using a sample product, Protect and Brighten Daily Skin Shield SPF 50 V1. It starts with a quick click on Execute Workflow, then the product name gets dropped in. An image, sunscreen.png, is uploaded next, followed by the product category, which is set as facial sunscreen. For the highlighted benefit, it's a short line that reads, Broad Spectrum Protection with SPF 50, Protects and Brightens Skin. After that, it's just a matter of hitting Submit. From there, everything runs automatically. Each piece gets processed and a new folder is created with a full product name, confirming the whole thing worked exactly as expected. To make sure it all runs smoothly, there are a few things you'll need to set up first. Have your Google Drive credentials ready so the outputs can be saved, and make sure you've got enough OpenAI tokens available, otherwise the AI won't generate anything. You'll also need to be organization verified in your account settings, or the workflow won't be accessible. To get things rolling, we're going to set up the trigger that starts the workflow, and in this case, it's going to run when someone submits a form. There's also a Shopify trigger available called Product Created, but most people won't be using Shopify for this. That's why we're sticking with the more flexible option, a simple form submission trigger. Once that trigger is added to the workflow, we'll start building out the form itself. First, we'll give it a title and write a quick description to explain what the form is for. And nothing complicated, just something clear and useful. From there, we're going to add the first question. What is the product's name? The element type will be set to text and we'll mark it as required so it can't be skipped. Next, we'll add another form field for the product tagline. Just like before, we'll set the type to text and make sure the required toggle is switched on, because yeah, we don't want that left blank either. After that, we're going to drop in a third field to handle image uploads. This one will be labeled Upload Product Image, and instead of text, the element type is going to be set to File. We'll make it required too, but limit uploads to one image by turning off the Multiple Files option, keeping things simple and clean. The rest of the form questions will be added using that same process, typing in the label, setting the type of text, and toggling the required field on. Once all the elements are in place, we're gonna hit Execute Step to activate the trigger, and just like that, the form is ready to go. Now, we're moving into the part where variables will be mapped and customized, and for that, we're gonna use the Set Fields node, sometimes labeled as Edit Fields. This step is all about shaping the JSON output based on what the client needs, so it's kind of the control center for the data you're about to generate. First, we'll add the set fields node into the workflow. Once it's in, the mode needs to be switched from manual mapping to JSON, which opens up a full editor for entering structured content. We'll paste in the prepared JSON code right into that input area. 
At this point, it's worth noticing that the JSON is completely editable. You can manually insert values by putting the content inside quotation marks, like in the brand name field. That little detail makes it easy to customize anything on the fly. Once everything looks good, we'll press execute step to run it. And here's where something interesting shows up. Since no value has been entered for brand name, the output flags it as missing, while all the other fields display their content correctly. It's a quick way to confirm that the structure is working and to spot exactly where input is still needed. This next step is all about setting up a new folder in Google Drive, and we're gonna name it based on the product name submitted in the form. So if someone types in a product name, that's exactly what the folder will be called. After we successfully set this up, any generated files can be saved directly into that folder. Alright, we'll start by adding the Google Drive Create folder node to the workflow. After that, we'll apply the Google credentials and connect it to an authenticated Google account. Just a quick login step if it hasn't been done yet. Next, we'll configure the node. The resource will be set to folder, and the operation will be set to create. For the folder name, we're gonna drag in the value from the form field labeled what is the product's name that came from the form submission trigger we set up earlier. This way, the folder will always match the product name exactly without needing to type it again. Then, we'll choose where that folder gets saved. Under drive location, we'll leave the parent drive set to my drive. For the parent folder, we'll select Select by ID. To get that ID, we just need to grab the unique string of characters from the Google Drive folder URL and paste it into the parent folder ID field. Now we're ready to click Execute Step. If everything's set up right, we'll get a success response with the folder's metadata. And when we check Google Drive, we'll see the new folder sitting exactly where it's supposed to be. Now it's time to plug in the brains of the operation, the AI agent. This is where all the product information from the form gets passed into an AI prompt, which then returns clean, structured content we can use downstream. Setting this up just takes a few pieces working together. A prompt, some mapped variables, an OpenAI API key, and a couple of output nodes to process everything cleanly. We'll start by adding the AI agent node to the workflow. In the prompt settings, we'll change the source from connected chat trigger to define below, so we can paste in a custom prompt. That's where the prepared prompt goes, right into the prompt user message field. From there, we can map any form data directly into the prompt. If we want to reference something like the product name or tagline, we just drag those values in from the on form submission trigger. If any variables are missing, they'll show up as red highlights easy to spot and fix. Next, we'll enable the require specific output format by turning on that toggle. This tells the AI to return structured output, which we'll parse later using a dedicated node. But first, we'll drop in an OpenAI chat model node to handle the actual text generation. If OpenAI credentials haven't been added yet, we'll need to create one. Just grab the API key from the OpenAI platform, head back to N8N, and paste it into a new credential. Once that's connected, we'll set up a structured output parser right after the AI agent. This node takes the AI's response and turns it into clean JSON. We'll place the expected format so the parser knows what to look for, same structure we use in the prompt response. Back in the AI agent node under the options section, we'll also add a system message. This is where we paste a separate instruction that helps guide the AI's overall tone or behavior, kind of like a background rule for how it should think. After everything's wired up, we can now hit execute step to test it. If it's all configured correctly, the AI will respond with structured content that follows the format we defined. No mess, no guesswork. Uploading an image sounds simple, and it is, until you try to pass that file through the workflow and suddenly it doesn't show up where it's supposed to. To keep things smooth, we're gonna add a quick code node here that helps the image get picked up properly in the next step. I just wanna make sure the file doesn't get dropped halfway through. 
we'll start by adding a code node to the workflow. The mode will be set to run once for all items, and we'll keep the language on JavaScript. Then we'll paste in the prepared script. It's already set up to handle the image input and make sure it's passed forward in the right format. Once the code is in place, we'll click Execute step to run it. From here, the image is properly processed and ready for whatever comes next in the workflow. Now, when you're working with different types of assets, you also want to make sure each one ends up in the right place. That's the goal here. We're setting up a simple routing system based on asset type, so the workflow knows exactly what to do with each file as it moves through. We'll start by adding a switch node to the workflow. The mode will be set to rules, since we're building conditions that control the routing. The format is straightforward. It checks whether value 1 is equal to value 2. For each rule, we'll drag the first asset type from the input schema into value 1, then paste the matching label result into value 2. Once that's in, we'll click Add Routing Rule and do the same thing for the next one. We'll repeat this step 5 times total, one for each category of asset. Once it's all set up, every asset will be correctly routed based on its type, with zero manual sorting needed later in the workflow. Alright, it's time to bring the visuals to life. This part of the workflow is where we generate images using AI, one for each content category. We'll be creating five separate image generation bots, each with its own tailored prompt to produce something unique, depending on what it's meant for. It might sound like a lot, but once the first one's done, the rest fall into place pretty easily. We'll start by adding the OpenAI Generate an Image node to the workflow, just like what we did in other sections. After selecting the correct OpenAI credentials, we'll set the resource to Image, the operation to generate an image, and choose a GPT Image 1 as the model. Then we'll paste in the prepared prompt into the input field. This is what tells the AI what kind of image to generate, so getting the wording right here makes a big difference. If the prompt needs extra content, we can drag in variables from the on-form submission node to personalize it a bit. And if anything is missing, don't worry, it's super obvious. Those red highlights make it clear which variables still need to be mapped. Once the first image bot is ready, we'll create the rest by either duplicating the node with Ctrl C Ctrl V or just adding new ones manually, whichever is quicker. After each one is added, we'll rename the node to reflect what it's meant to generate, paste in the correct prompt for that specific category, and map any necessary variables from the form. We'll repeat this process until all five image generation nodes are set up, one for each category. No need to test them all right away. Here, we're only testing the Instagram post bot just to make sure everything was wired up correctly. That's usually enough to know the rest will work the same way. Now that the images are generated, I want to get them into the right folders on Google Drive. This part connects each image to its final destination using the Google Drive upload file node, so every asset ends up exactly where it belongs. It might seem like a repetitive step, but once the first one's set up, the rest follow the same pattern. Again, we'll start by adding the Google Drive upload file node to the workflow and selecting the correct Google credentials. Under Configuration, we'll set the resource to File and the operation to Upload. For the input data field name, we'll use Data. That's what pulls in the image content. Then, we'll edit the file name so it clearly matches the folder it's going into. That way, everything stays clean and easy to organize. Next, we'll handle the folder placement. Under Parent Drive, we'll select My Drive from the list. For the parent folder, we'll choose By ID and then drag in the folder ID from the earlier Google Drive Create a Folder node. That's what ensures each image lands in the exact right spot. To keep things organized, we'll rename the node to match the category it belongs to, something simple and clear. From here, we'll either duplicate the upload node with Ctrl C, Ctrl V, or manually add new ones for each category, just like we did earlier with the image generation bots. Once each upload node is in place, we'll give them proper names and adjust the file names as needed so everything lines up. The last step is connecting each upload node to its matching image generation node. This keeps the file flow clean and automatic. And that's all there is to it. 
each image now knows exactly where it's going, and everything gets uploaded without you needing to touch a thing. So now you've seen the full thing, from triggering the workflow, to generating content with AI, to sending everything exactly where it needs to go. It's fast, reliable, and honestly, kind of satisfying once it's all wired together. This kind of setup makes a big difference once it's running. You go from juggling tasks and chasing files to letting the workflow handle everything for you. Content, images, storage, the whole thing. It's fast, consistent, and actually frees you up to focus on bigger stuff instead of babysitting every step. If you want to keep building with flows like this, hit subscribe and stick around. There's more coming.